Hi you and welcome to this modding guide video for Versus Mandate, the second DLC campaign for the original beer. And in this guide, we will make it run on a computer using Windows 11. The Steam version of the game is what we are talking about. And this guide was recorded in 2024. And I will be talking about 2560 times 1440 when we talk display options. But most of the things I do can be applied to other settings as well. 1080 for instance so we will be running through this list that you can see on screen right now it has eight points on it and it has to do with pretty much starting the game installing the game and then we'll go into some tips and tricks some common bugs some improvements and at the very end hopefully we have the game up and running looking good running smoothly and you know all those good things and We'll start at the very beginning with the installation of the game. But for that, I just want to say that if this uh, guide wind up helping you, I would love it if you hit those like and subscribe buttons. There we go. This is the Steam version of the game. So I thought it only proper to start in Steam. And here we have Persis Mandate, I've already installed it, but it was a fresh installation. I didn't have this game installed previously on this computer. And that is also what I would recommend. A fresh installation takes away the possibility of lingering bugs and glitches from previous installations. So if at all possible, I would go with a fresh installation. If you do not want to do that, however, I would strongly recommend that you do a backup save of your save files if you want to continue a campaign run from previously. Because modern games usually break save files. And if you don't want to do that, do a backup save. Also, if you have an older installation that you do not want to take away and then reinstall the game, we can do the following. So right click on the game then options down at the bottom and installed files and the second option here we have verify integrity with the game files and if you click on that the steam will do a check on the installation itself and see if everything looks okay so you can do that to be on a safer side than if you want to do a fresh installation after having done that you can try to start up the game itself just to uh, see if it does that at all. And if it doesn't, maybe you want to go in here, like the general, the first choice, and then you have the start. Well, it's an empty field where you can do a manual startup sequence, basically. And only use this if you run into uh, problems, because otherwise it's really not needed. And if you do need it, This is what you want to use. User directory fear xp2 underscore user. And all of the information I will have on screen as I talk about it. All of the links will be in this description. And well, I will try to make sure that the information is easy to get to and easy to see as well. So this is if the game for some reason doesn't want to start up. I will leave it empty because if it's not needed, it's not needed. And there we have it. Now, the third item on the list was getting the right compatibility mode. And this is important because this game is old now and it used um, other versions of Windows when it was released. We need to look into that. And in order to look into that, we need to go to the folder where the game was installed, which is why I recommend using the default installation path. And here we have that. Uh, it should be found under program 86 Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fear Ultimate Shooter Edition, and Fear XP2. XP2 is the short name for Perseus Mandate. And in here, we are looking for this file, Launcher. So right click on that, go to the bottom for more options, and then we can go to the bottom again, 
which should open this window. And on this window, you have the compatibility tab. Click on that. I've already tinkered with this. So when you first came here, it probably had this. Oh, I should say it probably looked like this. So Windows Vista and it was grayed out. So check the checkbox, open the drop down menu and then pick Windows XP Service Pack 2 or Windows XP Service Pack 3. And when you're done with that, execute and OK. And now the game will be using the compatibility mode that matches kind of what the system was when the game was first released. So that should definitely help. So we are now through the first three items on my eight point list and we are entering display settings territory. One thing I should mention is that this game actually had an update, which the first DLC did not. So a lot of display settings are available in game. And I would recommend that you start up the game and go into the settings in game and just put everything to what you want it to be. Okay, so here we are inside of the game. And at this point, you might have already run into a somewhat common bug. And that is that the game crashes on first launch. And it says something of, about like some video files not being able to load. This happens to quite a few gamers out there. And it's usually solved by simply starting the game again, which I did. And the game started just fine. So that's the most common way to fix that. And if that doesn't work, you can always run the game from the config file in the game folder but hopefully that's not necessary. So in here, I have already tweaked on all the things I want to tweak, because otherwise the default resolution would make you look at a very tiny little square up in one of the corners of the screen right now, which is uncomfortable. But yes, we want to look at options. So we have display. And the default here is widescreen set to off, and it has, I think, 720 as resolution. I obviously didn't want to have that, so I put it to on and then I picked the resolution that I wanted. There are quite a few to pick from here, so pick the one that you are interested in. Then I put on vSync. I also did the HUD text scaling to large, and I think I left it at that. Sound, well, that's up to you. I dropped it down a little bit in order for you to hear what I'm saying. We have performance, I think auto detected what it is. My one was set as maximum and but I wanted to do some tweaking. So I went into advanced computer options, made sure that everything was either on or at maximum. And the same thing goes for the effects and the graphics. And I picked anisotropic 16. And you can see I also had my screen resolution down here. So Make sure that you have everything on here that you want. And if you're interested in it, you can also do a test set to see that it looks like you want it to look. So now that we're done with that, we can actually back out and then quit the game. All right, so we have done some tweaking in game. And hopefully you found a resolution that you are happy with. So now we are at item number five on the list. And that item is keeping the FPS stable. So keeping the FPS stable is a problem in all of the fear games, I believe. And yes, it's very irritating in an FPS game for the game to be stuttering. And there is a common solution for this, and we will look into that right now. So here we have it, direct input FPX fix. And this is by methane hydrate. And basically it says that the direct input FPX fix fixes an input related FPS drop slowdown problem that occurs in fear with expansions and a bunch of older games. And we need the DIN put 8.D 
DLL file and we need to drop that into the game folder and that should fix the problem. So I also just noticed that this is uh, for the GOG version as well. So that's a nice little bonus. So basically just download the file, which I've already done, but I think it'll open up a rather ugly window with some ads, but it should be easy enough to download the game or the file, I should say. And after that, simply extract it. And when you have extracted that, make sure to either drag and drop or copy and paste the dinput8.dll file into the game folder, which I have done right here. So that should take care of the FPS stability problem, which makes it time to look into number six, getting the game to display 25, 60, 14, 40. And I had that as an example, as I mentioned previously. So this game actually has a lot of options as we just saw. So maybe this won't be needed at all. But if you have something that wasn't available in game, we can still have a crack at it. And in order to do that, we need to go to another folder. And that folder can be found under user, shared, shared documents, TimeGate Studios and Fear XP2. And in here, there are some other files and one of them is settings.cfg so open that with notes like so and in here you can see that you have screen width and screen height and I have already 25 60 14 40 there because I picked that in game but if you want something else feel free to add it in here and then save I would also recommend it that you if you add something other than the default, go into here and then lock the file so that it won't get overwritten by the game when it's up and running. So that is the way to add other displays other than those found in game, so to speak. We are now at number seven bigger subtitles. And that is an issue. If you play these games with default settings for subtitles, they will be absolutely tiny. And we don't want that, do we? No. So this was called Fear Collection Small Font Fixed by Deus and Montonero. And this page was done by Isman Sabo 890629. And he basically has three files available here. One for 1080p, one for 1440p and one 4K. But that's only for the base game. So unfortunately not for Perseus Mandate. And take note of the fact that these are password protected. So in order to unzip the files you need to enter pcgw and once again simply go into the download and pick the one you want i've already done this and i wanted the 1440 but if you want the 1080 then that's the one you should pick obviously and after that unzip the file using the password and that should give you this actually let's back out a little bit because it should probably give you this so you would have a readme file and Fear Ultimate Shooter Edition. And then you go into there and you see Fear 1440 Arch 00. That's not the one we want. We want the XP2. So go into here. And this file is the one that we are interested in. So either drag and drop or copy and paste. Here we are. You can see that there are already a collection of these files here, but we will now drop in the new one. Do a refresh. You can see it's now in there in the list. And that's the first step of making this work, but we need to do some more tinkering. So in order to make sure that you spell it correctly, I usually do change name and then I copy the file name straight, straight off like that. And now you need to go into the default arch CFG, open it with notes. And here we have it. So you can see those default files are there. We need one more now, so just paste in the file name and then save it and close it down. And once again, I actually did this just to be on the safe side, so I locked it, execute and OK. So now I know it's in there and this should make sure that the game actually runs the bigger subtitles. 
which is exactly what we want to do. We'll actually uh, look into that at the very end of this guide so you see what I'm talking about. But before we get there, we are now at item number eight. And this is a big one in your games. And uh, it can cause a real hassle because it keeps the game stuttering or freezing and sometimes crashing. And it has to do with older games having a finite amount of working memory. It had two gigabytes, I think. And we want to double that because that makes all the difference in the world. And this page is for NT core and the four gigabyte patch. And well, basically it is as follows. I originally wrote this tool for a friend of mine who needed it. This very little tool patches x86 executables in order to let them have four gigabyte instead of only two of virtual memory. And there we have it. It doubles up the memory. So once again, uh, simply download the file. I've already done that. And then you can place it wherever you want and extract it and then open the program within. So when you have unzipped it, go into the four gigabyte patch and open it. And now you need to go to the game folder again. So make sure that you're in there and then go down to the launcher click on it and then open executable successfully patched so that adds the memory solution to Perseus mandate and that's it now you should have more memory to work with within the game itself and that's pretty much it we have now installed the game we have shown options with the launch option we have Pick the right compatibility mode. We have looked at the display options within the game. We have fixed potential FPS problems. We have looked how to tinker with the display outside of the game if the in-game options weren't to your liking. We have added bigger subtitles and we have prevented the out of memory error. And I think I will simply run the game here at the end to show off the bigger subtitles. All right, we are back inside of the game and I will simply try to show you the bigger subtitles. So here we can see the game up and running with all the tinkering we have done. So we have that running already and now we want some subtitles. So there you have it. Instead of being tiny and to the side, they are now centered and you can actually read them. So mission accomplished. We have bigger subtitles. So this is where I will leave you. Hopefully now you have been able to install the game, move past some of the quirkiness with it and also added some tweaks and made some possible future problems no longer relevant. I should add that this guide was only made possible with the help of other contributors. And those were the Magic Don Juan, Montoneer, Methanhydrate, Voltweller, Michael, Anticore, and many more aside from them. I simply put their solutions into one video and try to apply everything in a set list of sorts. So yes, hopefully you now have Persis mandate on Windows 11 using the Steam version in 2024 up and running. Thank you for using this guide in order to get Fear Persis mandate up and running. I really hope it made the trip easier. I would love it if you hit those like subscribe buttons if the video helped. And if I saw you again in videos in the future. But for now, it's time to say bye bye.